Hi, my name is Ethan Hine. Welcome to Play With Your Music. Uh, in this, the final video in the rhythm series, we're going to be talking about swing. And swing is one of those concepts that seems totally mystical and impossible to verbalize, but it is in fact a technical music term. Uh, it's a really, really important one if your beats are gonna sound groovy. So let us get to it. Uh, so what you're seeing here are two different drum machine patterns. Um, they're both um, just really basic hip hop. And the only difference between them is that the top one uses what are called straight eighth notes, and the bottom one uses swung eighth notes. So let's, uh, before we even talk about what this means, let's just listen to straight eighth notes. Now we're going to listen to swung eighth notes and you're going to immediately hear the difference. Okay. What you were just hearing is uh, the difference between evenly spaced drum hits, or in this case, cymbal hits, and not evenly spaced cymbal hits. So swing really consists of alternately lengthening and shortening every other eighth note. So here, all these hi-hat hits are the same distance apart. Down here, in the pairs, the first half of the pair is stretched out wider, second half of the pair is jammed closer together, wider, closer together, wider, closer together. That's what swing is. It's just alternately making each pair of eighth notes longer, shorter, longer, shorter. And that seems like kind of a dumb and trivial thing, but it is absolutely crucial in making your music groovy and soulful. So this is... Uh, a visualization of swing that I like to use um, using the, the circle method. So here you've got straight eighth notes. Each of these eighth notes is the same width. Over here, you've got swung eighth notes. So the first half in each pair is wider, second half is narrower, wider, narrower, wider, narrower. And you can swing by different degrees. So this is an example of very exaggerated swing where the first half of each pair of eighth notes is like twice as long as the second half. Uh, you can also do lighter swing where the two halves are almost the same width. The first one is just a little bit wider. Um, you can do even more exaggerated swing than this. Uh, all of those degrees of swing have different uh, musical feelings to them, and we're going to be getting to some examples of them in a second. Um, from a practical standpoint, if you're using a drum machine or a drum machine emulation software like Reason or Ableton or any of those things, somewhere in there, there's going to be a control labeled swing or shuffle. In Reason, it's literally a knob that goes from zero to 100. And when it's set to zero, you get straight eighth notes, evenly spaced eighth notes. And when it's set to 100, you have this super exaggerated, the first half of each pair is way wider than the second half. Um, usually you do not want to use 100% swing because it sounds kind of goofy. Usually you want it somewhere in between. Where exactly you want to set it is 100% up to you. It really depends on the sound that you're going for. So let's hear some examples. Uh, we're going to listen to the same piece of music first without swing and then with very heavy swing. It's uh, Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies from the Nutcracker Suite by Tchaikovsky. Uh, it's probably familiar to you. Here it is. So like most classical music, these eighth notes are as straight as they get. Da, 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 da. You could practically see the rectangles all the same width lined up on the page. Now, here is a version of the same piece of music as arranged by Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn. 
uh, and they've entitled it Sugar Rum Cherry from their album that is a complete jazz interpretation of the Nutcracker Suite, which if you need some joy in your life, you should get it. It's a good one. So here is their version. <laughs> So very different, right? Totally different feeling, much groovier, much sexier. Uh, and obviously there are some differences in the instrumentation. They're using saxophones and, and trombones instead of strings. But the main difference there is this is very, very heavy swing. And yeah, like I said, what a difference it makes. Um, so there's a particular variety of swing that's called shuffle. And you most commonly hear it in the blues, as in the music of Robert Johnson. Shuffle is swing that's so exaggerated that the first half of each pair of eighth notes is twice as long as the second half. And so what you could really do is think of it as, instead of dividing each beat in half, you could think of it as dividing it into three. And the first two thirds are grouped together, and then the last third is by itself. So you get this feeling of instead of one and two and three and four and it starts to feel like one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Um, or you could count it one, two, three, four, five, six, six, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And for that reason, um, blues shuffle is also sometimes known as 12-8 feel or 12-8 shuffle because you can sort of think of it as 12 beats crammed into the space of eight beats. Um, Whatever you want to call it, all it means is that the swing is as exaggerated as it gets, like 100% on the uh, swing setting on your drum machine. So here's a song by Robert Johnson that is a classic blues shuffle. As I said before, outside of the blues, you don't want to use 100% swing. In other genres of music, it sounds a little corny, but in the blues, right, it works great. So swing is not confined to jazz and blues. It appears in many, many different kinds of styles of music, um, especially in reggae. Um, Bob Marley swings like crazy. Here is his song, Lively Up Yourself. You're gonna lively up yourself and don't be no drag. You lively up yourself, for reggae is an all of that. So lively up yourself, the swing feeling is quite a bit different than what you hear in the Robert Johnson or in the Duke Ellington. It's a lot lighter, it's a lot straighter, the eighth notes are a lot more even. Um, also, the, uh, the tempo is really slow and the beats are subdivided a lot more finely than in these other styles of music. Um, so instead of this one and two and three and four and that you get in, uh, in the Duke Ellington, you get it's barely swung at all, but it is swung. And that little bit of swing is what gives it its kind of groovy, islandy flavor. Uh, you might not expect swing to appear in country music, but swing is absolutely crucial to country music. Um, and the difference between a terrible country band and a good country band is their ability to swing. So this is Hank Williams Sr. and we're gonna listen to his song, Love Sick Blues. So that's actually quite heavy, exaggerated swing. It's almost as wide as Duke Ellington, not quite as wide as the full blues shuffle, but definitely pretty pronounced. Um, in fact, there's a whole subgenre of country music called Western Swing, which in which uh, a country band plays stuff by Duke Ellington, Count Basie, 
um, music like that. The best known one is Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. They're pretty wonderful. Uh, if you ever want to hear Duke Ellington played with fiddles and pedal steel, check them out. Um, so that is swing. Uh, try experimenting with it in your drum machine or your drum machine software. See how much swing is right for you. And uh, yeah, trust your ears and have fun.